the tight end position is finally starting to score some points in fantasy football. The problem is the first few weeks got us all so gun shy, we don't trust anyone. Luckily in week eight, we have no bye weeks, so we have plenty of tight ends to choose from. Now, just like I do in all my rankings videos, I gotta discuss my bigger hits and misses from just last week at the tight end position. So when it comes to hits, Jonu Smith, Kyle Pitts, Patty F, Pat Fryermuth, all basically finished where we had them ranked, but I did have some big time misses. Guys like Evan Ingram, Travis Kelsey, Sam Laporta. I had all of them ranked way too high. And this really goes back to what I talked about in the opening. Like some of these guys, it was teed up for them to have a great game. They were coming off a good game. And they absolutely just gave you the fantasy finger last week. But now, hopefully with no buys this week, hopefully there's a little bit of normalcy at the position. So let's go ahead and dive into Tier 1 of the tight end position here for Week 8. And right here in Tier 1, we got Brock Bowers, George Kittle, David Njoku, and Trey McBride. Now for Brock Bowers, he's going up against Kansas City. He's the current tight end 2 overall in fantasy football. He's had at least 11 fantasy points in 3 straight. He's had 10 plus targets now in 3 straight. But they could be getting Jacoby Myers back into this offense. I'm not worried about it. If they want to have a chance at beating Kansas City, they need Brock Bowers because the Chiefs allow the most fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. Then we go down to George Kittle going up against Dallas. He's the current tight end one overall in fantasy football, but he's questionable to play with a sprained foot. Now, obviously, if he's good to go, he's a high-end tight end. We know Brandon Ayuk is out. We know Debo is sick, and Juwan Jennings is currently questionable with a hip injury, and he didn't even play last week. So as we head into the weekend, if George Kittle is active, he's in our lineups. Then we go down to David Njoku going up against Baltimore, and someone needs to catch balls in Cleveland. It sure hasn't been Jerry Judy or a Elijah Moore here as of late. They've proven to be pretty unreliable. David Njuka had 14 targets, 10 receptions, 76 yards, and a touchdown just last week, and that usage isn't going anywhere. Now a matchup going up against Baltimore. They allow the seventh most fantasy points to opposing tight ends, and Jameis Winston is now under center. Which will then take us down to number four. It's Trey McBride of the Arizona Cardinals going up against Miami. He's the current tight end five overall and the most consistent producer in the Arizona passing game. He's had seven plus targets now in three straight games, five catches and at least 50 yards in three straight games. The biggest issue here, no touchdowns. And that sucks. Especially in a matchup like this going up against Miami. They allow the third fewest fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. But like I've said in every other positional video, with Tua coming back, I expect Miami to get a lead in this ballgame. If Arizona is trailing, they're not going to be able to run it with James Conner consistently. They're going to have to throw the football. And with Marvin Harrison Jr. basically getting ignored on a weekly basis, Trey McBride is the safest option in Arizona this week. Now, before I dive into tier two, let me shout out today's sponsor, SeatGeek. And I have a question for you. If you were able to go to any week 18 game in the country, which game would it be? And with the holiday season right around the corner, what better present is out there than giving a loved one a ticket to an event they want to go to. And it doesn't have to be a football game. It can be any sport. It can be a concert. It can be a festival and so many other things. And that's why you gotta use SeatGeek. There is over 70,000 events right now on SeatGeek that you can get tickets for. They have over 28 million downloads. They're the number one rated ticketing app out there. And you know I'm going to get you a discount, which is just like an added bonus because you already know that SeatGeek is going to try to get you the best deal possible. Each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10. You got to go after the green dots. Green means good, red means bad. So find those good deals. Then use the promo code HEADLINERS at checkout. Just by doing that, you're going to get $20 off. That's right, that's $20 off your first purchase with promo code HEADLINERS over on SeatGeek. So hit that link down below in the description and get yourself $20 off. Get yourself a present for somebody, I promise. I promise I won't tell them that you got it on a discount. But all right, on to tier two tight ends. And right here at the top of tier two, we got Tucker Craft, Evan Ingram, Kyle Pitts, Kate Otten, Travis Kelsey, and Cole Komet. Now for Tucker Craft, he's got a great matchup going up against Jacksonville. He's the current tight end three on the year, has had 10 plus fantasy points now in three of his last four ball games. But with all the wide receivers healthy in Green Bay, it's really hard for him to get a huge target share. He really needs a touchdown, and it's a great opportunity this week going up against Jacksonville. They allow 11 fantasy points per game to the tight end position, sixth most in the league. Then 
we go down to Evan Ingram going up against Green Bay, his opponent in that game. And really, they just didn't need Evan Ingram as much in Week 7 as they did in Week 6. He's still in line for a large target share, especially for the tight end position. This game this week should be much better when it comes to game script. The Packers do allow 10 fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends, which is 10th most in the league. Then we go down to Kyle Pitts going up against Tampa Bay, and I feel like I've said this all week long when it comes to Falcons players, but the best game they've had all year was the game against Tampa Bay three weeks ago, and Kyle Pitts is no different. In that game, seven catches for 88 yards, and Tampa Bay can't stop anyone right now. Then we go down to his opponent in that game, Kate Otten going up against Atlanta, and freaking Kate Otten looked like prime Gronk out there in week seven. He was sacrificing his body. He was making huge catches. And now we know we're not going to have Mike Evans or Chris Godwin, so the targets are going to continue going his way. Last week, 10 targets, 8 catches, 100 yards. Now a matchup going up against Atlanta in a game they're probably going to be trailing, and the Falcons already allow 9 fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. Then we go down to Travis Kelsey going up against the Raiders. Travis Kelsey is just in a reduced role most weeks to keep him healthy. He's got no touchdowns on the year and only one game over 70 yards this season, and the Raiders, they're pretty solid against the tight end position. Now, after Kelsey, we go down to Cole Komet in a matchup going up against Washington, and just like every other Bears weapon, it comes down to who's getting the touchdowns weekly. Komet has only had a couple good fantasy games all year, but when he has them, they are matchup winning. He's super boomer bust, and in a matchup going up against Washington, which could turn into a shootout, they allow 7.7 .7 fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. Then let's move down to Tier 3, where we have Jake Ferguson, Mark Andrews, Sam Laporta, Dalton Kincaid, and Patty F. Pat Fryermuth. Now for Ferguson, he's coming off the bye, and he had a bad Week 6 right before the bye as well. Only three catches for 11 yards in a game they were being blown out by Detroit. But Dallas is going to have to throw the ball a lot this week against San Francisco, and they allow eight fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. After him, we go to Mark Andrews, who's closing out the top 12 here in a matchup going up against Cleveland. And Andrews started the season with five straight crap ball games and then has blown up in the last two and now all of a sudden is the tight end nine overall on the season. The injury to Zay Flowers can only help Mark Andrews so that's definitely something to pay attention to here rest of the week. It's also worth noting that Andrews was saved by touchdowns in both of the last two ball games. Can he find the end zone this week against Cleveland is the biggest question because they allow the fourth fewest fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. Then we go down to Sam Laporta going up against Tennessee. And does the suspension of Jamison Williams finally give Sam Laporta a chance to be more relevant in 2024? He only has two catches over the last two games combined. If he doesn't get decent volume now, it may be over for him for the season. But it's not the easiest of matchups going up against Tennessee, who does allow the second fewest fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. Then we go down to Dalton Kincaid, another disappointing tight end here in 2024. He's going up against Seattle, and he's only got one touchdown on the season. His season high in yardage is only 52, and now all of a sudden we're starting to see Keon Coleman get more and more looks each week. Add in the fact that Amari Cooper is also about to get alpha wide receiver targets, our days are being numbered with Dalton Kincaid. Luckily, not a horrible matchup going going up against Seattle, they allow the 8th most fantasy points per game to the tight end position. And then lastly, it's Patty F. Pat Frymuth going up against the Giants. We all know Russ likes his tight end, and Patty F. really could be the number 2 option in this passing offense in Pittsburgh. He's currently the tight end 11 overall, not a super high ceiling, but the floor each and every week should be fairly safe. And that'll get us through our top 15 tight ends here for week eight fantasy football. Now I know for a lot of us, when we're trying to set our lineups at the tight end position, it's just like throwing a dart. And really the only thing I can tell people is just chase the targets, find the volume, at least have a guy that has an opportunity at reeling in a few catches. Now, if you enjoyed today's show, do me a favor by hitting the like button and subscribing now. Because I hate to tell you, if you don't subscribe right now, your tight end's probably only going to score two points this week, and you're probably going to lose because of it. But I'm going to go ahead and get out of here for the day. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of your day, and then most importantly, do your part to make the world a better place. Analytics.